Silver players occasionally have the hands of challenger players, but their macro rarely matches. Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 5 tips to instantly improve your macro. Macro is a huge part of League of Legends and MOBAs overall. While getting kills can make winning the games easier, it's still possible to lose with bad map plays. By the end of this video, you should be able to improve your macro play and set yourself up for success, so you can go ahead and begin carrying games through map control and shot calling. Let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into the video. Starting us off strong, we've got properly setting up objectives. A lot of people don't think about objectives until they spawn, but you should be planning ahead. Dragon, Baron, and Rift Herald shouldn't be contested as they spawn unless it's planned for. Instead, try thinking ahead so you can properly take control of the area and set yourself up and your team for success. Let's take a look at a few key things that you can do for this. In terms of whether or not to just attempt to set up an objective, you need to look at your team. You should be thinking about this a minute and 30 seconds to 2 minutes before the objective spawns. For one, is your team fighting stronger than the enemy? Two, who needs to rotate or show up in order to win the fight? Three, can your allies get wave control if necessary or do they need help? And four, is this objective worth fighting? Once you consider this and you still want to contest the objective, let's move forward. At about one minute, you're going to want to get your first rotation of vision and begin the process of crashing the wave so you can reset. After this, begin clearing vision and regaining control of the objective area. Be sure to shove or slow push waves accordingly in order to help you and your allies safely accomplish this. Once you've secured vision and good wave states, you're done. Take the objective with your team and make sure you let your allies know what the plan is if the enemy shows up. Whether it's turning or securing of the objective, make sure that everybody's on the same page. If you're still feeling a little bit lost on what we mean when we talk about vision control, let's quickly cover a few locations to focus on. For both the Dragon and Baron, you'll want to pink as close to the middle as you can so you can disable all wards of the pit. With your extra pink ward, you can look toward Pixel Brush and or a spot in the river to deny additional vision. This one really depends on which side of the map the enemy team is on. While setting up wards, you'll want to get vision that allows you to see as the enemy is moving towards the objective. This will give you an easy heads up and allows for you and your team to plan accordingly. Finally, when we talk about control of the area, this includes sweeping in. Be sure that if you're on a sweeper duty, you're clearing out any wards that give information about the objective or where your allies could be sitting. Before we continue on to our next big tip, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. With our new $7.99 monthly subscription, you can take your gameplay to the next level with some brand new courses and bootcamp content. So, if your New Year's resolution is to climb the ladder, well, then we're here for you. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. As a member, you'll even get a 10% coaching discount. So, what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the ProGuides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video, we've got Mastering Lane Assignments. When it comes to macro play, we often see players get lost during the mid game. Once the laning phase ends, they kind of just default to A ramming the entire time. While this can be a useful tactic occasionally, it's a pretty awful strategy overall. While you and your allies all sit mid, you end up losing a lot around the map. You split an experience amongst the other members of your team and everybody fights for gold. Alongside this, there's no pressure being generated elsewhere, so the enemy is able to just walk around the entire map uncontested. To improve this, we should take a look at what each role's general purpose is and what lane assignments they can usually look for. For our top laners, it really depends on what kind of champion you're playing. If you're playing a split pusher, you're going to constantly want to be shoving the opposite side of the main objective. This is so you can go ahead and pressure the other side of the map while your team contests control. If you're playing somebody like Camille or Irelia who can split but prefers the team fight, you'll be doing the same but make sure that you have teleport available. If not, it's better shove in the wave and rotate or just tell your team that's a guaranteed 4v4. For our team tank players out there, you'll be looking to shove in the wave and rotate to help out our allies if there's an objective. If there isn't, you want to be playing safe and be preparing to teleport to fight if necessary, so that way you can turn the tides with your CC and hefty defensive stats. There's not much to say about our junglers, you're just going to want to adjust your clear path so you can end up in the same side as the main objective. Being on the wrong side will often lead to the enemy rushing the objective since they know that you're not there to contest, so be careful around vision. As a jungler, your main job is to be able to hover lanes and be there if the smite is needed. Take control of your jungle and help your allies that need it. Our mid laners are going to want to be on the same side of the objectives unless they have teleport up. If you're taking TP mid and your top laner doesn't have it, it can be more beneficial for you to be on the side lane on the opponent's side of the map. If a fight breaks out, your top laner will already be there and you'll have to know how to teleport quickly to turn the fight. Just be sure to keep in mind that some mages like Cassio and Ziggs enjoy being on an objective before it starts so they can properly zone control and poke. Finally, we've got our bot lane. These two are generally thrown in the mid lane as a default, but are also great at taking turrets in the side lanes with their team hovering them. Due to the nature of ADCs, they are the best at taking turrets and benefit from the golden experience of the lane. Supports are often going to be hovering their ADCs, but it's important to note that once an ADC shoves the lane, the support, jungle, and sometimes ADC should all walk together to retake vision control. With these lane assignments, you and your team will be able to properly pressure the map and rotate to necessary plays in the mid game. It may feel hard at first, but eventually these rotations and assignments will be second nature to you. 
Speaking of pressuring the map, let's talk about how pressure can significantly change the way you play the game. When it comes to playing the game with macro, pressure is incredibly important. Everything in the game creates pressure in one way or another. If your ally is shoving top, they generate pressure as they force the enemy to send an answer. If that ally is especially fed, they'll have to send more than one person. Most players will see their split pusher get collapsed on and will do nothing with the pressure in exchange. They'll simply continue to see us waves and wait for something to happen, or worse, they'll move towards their top laner to try to save the lost play. At the highest level of gameplay, League's map pressure constantly ebbs and flows as both teams mutually exchange things. Think of it as a small business, and both sides are aware of. Or if you know anything about economics, think of it as opportunity cost. The cost of forgoing one opportunity. If the enemy team sends 2-3 to three people with their split pusher, they're conceding their vision control on the opposite side of the map. If the enemy decides to commit and contest their allies control, then they understand that they will lose waves and turrets to split push. Most players fail to consider these changes, and rather than them being relatively even trades, they could become absolute heists. The enemy team should never be able to 3-man your split pusher, lose nothing, and then secure objective control. Any play on the map generates pressure, and it's up to you to play across the map in response. No matter what role you're playing, there is always something that you can trade on the map. If the enemy jungler just ganked bot, you can answer by ganking top. If the enemy mid roam top to break a freeze, your mid can now roam bot to dive. There's even the common tactic of splitting up the map so that junglers can assist their priority lanes. No matter what the play may be, it's important to consider what's being given and what's being taken. Don't let the enemy get away with stuff for free. Be sure to play around the pressure and the enemy decisions so you can go ahead and guide your allies to victory. Now before we move on, let's not forget about everybody's favorite pro guys tradition. Today, we want to ask you all, what is one tip a random player has given you when you first started playing League? Personally, I'll never forget being told to never stand still. While that person meant it as a way of dodging Nidalee spares, it has easily saved me many hours of learning how to orb walk and dodge things. Regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comment section below. Anyway, let's dive right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video, we want to talk about more guiding your allies to victory. While these tips are amazing on their own, they become even more powerful when you begin shot calling for your team. It can be a bit intimidating at first, but once you get comfortable with pinging rotations and making plays, you'll win far more games. While we wouldn't recommend spam pinging your allies by any means, it is always beneficial to call for objectives and communicate as much as possible. Rise new pings and objectives voting makes it easier than ever, though I'm not really used to the new pings at all. Anyway, when it comes to shot calling, you can look to guide your allies in what lanes they need to be in and what objectives you're playing for. Be sure to call out the plan and let them know how strong you are so you can go ahead and play around them if you need. That being said, it's important to also maintain your composure. Being a shot caller for your team can be difficult. If you make the wrong call, your team easily blames you for it, and you may even blame yourself. Even if you're not mad about your own call, sometimes you make bad ones based off a of bad experience in the game. Be sure to keep working together and make logical plays, not emotional ones. And with strategy and teamwork, any game is winnable. I mean, maybe not everyone, but a lot of games are winnable. Taking us towards the end of the video, we've got a huge part of macro play, and it's gotta be having mini map awareness. League is a game that heavily relies on information. Knowing where the enemy is allows you to make plays, seeing the wave state lets you know where it's going, having vision gives you the advantage, etc. What better way to get information is there than just simply just look at your map? If you watch any high ranking player, you'll see that they'll look at their map at any given moment that they aren't clicking something important. If it's just to hit a CS, they glance at the map. If it's walking into lane, they're looking at their map. If they're faker and have high brain processing, and is the main character, they're glancing around the map mid team fight. While you don't have to be glued to your game like pros do, it's still something that you should be doing. Really good players check the map every 5 seconds at minimum, so that way you can constantly get information about what's going on around the map. To start off, we recommend you train the map awareness by having a metronome or sound go off every 15 seconds. I know this sounds intense, but you know, maybe it's worth a try. Keep doing this until it becomes a habit to look down at your map, even for a split second when it goes off. Over time, you can reduce this timer by 2 seconds until you finally reach that sweet 5 second mark. It's honestly a difficult journey because it doesn't feel as rewarding as other skills in League. It'll take a lot of patience and discipline, but the amount of information that you'll gain from watching your map is priceless. Take your time and focus on improvement, you've got the summoner. And that sums up our video for today. Don't forget to join our ProGuides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.